Hi, my name is Frances, or Fran, whatever. And um, I have colon cancer stage four. And um, I've just kind of been letting you guys know my story and what I've been through. And uh, I was last talking about the hepatic surgery that I went through. And um, it was horrific. It, and when I was in the hospital, my mom came and met me at the airport. So she was there at the hospital with me. But every time I started throwing up and getting diarrhea, she ran out of the room and disappeared and never saw her again. But anyway, <laughs> that's another story. So um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, my mom was there. And when I came like out of the the drugs or anesthesia, I was asking, well, how'd the surgery go? She's like, oh, we went good. The doctor said he got all your cancer out. He took over a hundred tumors, he took out your appendix, your ovaries, your gallbladder, part of your bowels. I'm like, what? I was like, what did you just say? I was like, so he was supposed to take four tumors out. That's what it showed on the CAT scan. Four, three or four. And then I was like, I must be hearing things because she just said like over a hundred tumors they took out. And, um, so then I was passed out again on the drugs and then I wake up the next day and I see my mom. I'm like, Hey mom, how did that surgery go? I'm like, what, what did the doctor take out? Cause I thought I was dreaming it. I was like, I must've been dreaming that. that. That can't be. So I asked her again the second day after the surgery and she's like, Oh yeah. She's like, he got all the cancer out of you. He took over a hundred tumors and you're, you're, ovaries, your appendix, um, your gallbladder, part of your bowels, and he said he got it all, <laughs> and um, you're cancer free, and I'm like, wow, over a hundred tumors, I'm like, how could that be, you know, the CAT scan only showed three or four tumors, well, evidently the CAT scans don't show all the stuff that's inside of you, obviously, it's like the first CAT scan, they told me I didn't even have cancer, that I tested positive for diverticulitis. That's why it's scary because, you know, I get CAT scans every three months to tell me if I have cancer or not. Well, do I believe if I have cancer or not? I can't believe those tests. It could say I'm in remission and there could be cancer all over me. Like it said, I was in remission for three months. And who knows? I mean, how could all that cancer be over 100 tumors everywhere inside of me? I mean, how could that be? So I don't think the CAT scans really show all the cancer inside of you because over 100 tumors uh, is a big difference, if you ask me. So now, I guess that's why I was so deathly ill. No, I think it was the chemotherapy, the hot chemo that they put inside of you that poisoned me and made me so deathly ill like I was going to freaking die. Um, and that I was throwing up green for six weeks and still like my stomach was messed up even for after six weeks I was still throwing up even like seven and eight weeks later, but it was like sporadic I could hold food, but it wasn't you know as bad and um, Back um, when I was doing the original chemo when I first started chemo the doctor, you know, I was crying a lot and stuff and um, The doctor's like well, I, I think um you should take some antidepressants. I said, but I don't think I'm depressed. He goes, well, I think it'll help you get through chemo better and um, menopause because I had stopped getting a period when I started um, the chemo. And it was weird because once I stopped the chemo, um, the three months that I was supposedly in remission, well, I had gotten my period back and I was getting heavy, heavy periods every month, like exactly every 28 days like you know you're like you're supposed to and it came back my period like normal and but they were, they were heavy periods too every month and then um after that was all the way up until february when i had my surgery and then after that i haven't had a period ever since my hepatic surgery and um oh there's a couple other things i have to tell you too what to expect if you well it, it then again i don't know if every person's the same or or not, or if you're a man or a woman, it might be different too, obviously. But, um, so he put me on antidepressants, and I'm on those still. Um, I didn't take them, like, after the surgery, I didn't have my meds, and I was in Dallas for so long, and I was just so sick and crying all the time, and I was like, well, maybe I need to get those depression pills, because, like, it was just between agony and pain, uh, you know. It's like, well, maybe those will help me some depression pills. I don't know. I'll take anything at this point that I can take to make me feel better. 
And um, I also asked the doctor for anti-anxiety because I was just getting a lot of anxiety with losing my job and everything that I was going through. And I don't know, I just, uh, just felt like my life was just falling apart, everything, you know. And um, so he agreed to give me some Xanax. And so I take those as needed. Sometimes I take it just to relax or if I can't sleep some nights, I'll take it to sleep. It helps me sleep. Um, so I have that and then I have the depression pills. And then um, when I got out of the Dallas hospital, they put me on um, Norco. Oh, and they gave me, um, what's that other? Um, Dilata, Dilata. I was on that. But then when I ran out of that, um, he said to just take the Norcos, the hydrocodone um, pills. So I was on that pretty much until I came back to Marco home. And then my Naples doctor, he uh, gave me one more prescription. I think it was like 90 pills I had. And then after that, he was saying he didn't want to keep prescribing me pain medication. I don't know in Florida, they're really strict with the drug laws because um, I guess I guess that they said like 95% of all the drugs come from Florida. So they're really, really uh, strict on pain meds. So he sent me to a pain management doctor to prescribe me pain medication because I was still in pain. I mean, I was crying. It was, I was cramping. Um, it was, it was, you know, I was in a lot of pain. And um, even when I stopped throwing up, I was just, I was in a lot of pain and um, I wasn't ready to get off the pain medication. You know your own body and you know if you need something that's going to make you feel better. I couldn't even get out of the bed to do anything because I was cramping so bad. The cramps were horrible. And, um, it was so bad, yeah, basically uh, dehabilitating where you can't get out of the bed and function. And when I would take those hydrocodone pills, it would take off that, um, you know, that extra whatever edge that it takes off, that, that extra, the cramping, it would, you know, numb you out and I could get up and walk and, you know, walk to the kitchen even, I mean, or, you know, I didn't even go out of the house or do anything, I don't think, oh gosh not until probably the third month even. And it took me like four months to really uh, recover. And um, so um, so the drugs that I'm on now, okay, I quit the Dilata, then the Norco, I went to the pain management doctor and he, he said, well, I'm gonna try, he goes, have you ever taken morphine? I was like, uh, I don't know. Maybe I think when I was in the hospital, they might have had me on it, but I'm not sure. He goes, all right. He goes, well, you're not allergic to anything. I said, no, I'm not. And he said, okay, I'm going to put you on morphine. And it's a time release, eight hour. So every eight hours you take it. And um, he said, if you have any uh, breakthrough pain or shooting pain, you know, in between the eight hours to just take the Norcos, which were the hydrocodone pills. And he said, just take those. And I said, okay. But evidently, when I went back to see him a few weeks ago, he said that I guess I took too many hydrocodones and that so he didn't want me to take those anymore. He said to take um, these other morphine pills, but these are fast-acting morphine pills. They were both 15 milligrams, so I'm on the 8-hour, every 8 hours, 15 milligrams. I'm cramping right now, which reminds me uh, I need more pain medication because I'm probably timed to take it right now. Um... Tonight I did take, I, I, he told me not to take the hydrocodone, but I took it anyway because I took both morphines and I was still cramping. And the hydrocodone sometimes, I had a massive headache too and a sore throat. And I don't know if it's from this chemo pill that they put me on. I started chemo, which I haven't gotten into that yet. It's a pill, Zolota. But anyway, um, uh, with the pain meds that I'm on, um, morphine, the two morphines is what I'm just supposed to be taking those. And then I have Xanax as needed, depression pill one a day, which is Prozac 20 milligrams, generic for Prozac. And um, and that's what I'm on now. And um, I'm going to close this video, and then on the next one I'll continue about my new chemotherapy that I'm on. Signing out.